You ever heard Char Charlotte's mom sing that? She would have been done with it 45 seconds earlier and back over sitting down. <laughs> she played it fast. Charlotte really slowed it down for her to crawl up. So, they don't realize it. They don't realize I'm joking. They think I'm joking. <laughs> Whoa, that thing's loud. Okay, back of your bulletins this week. First for the week, Proverbs 28, 13. We're going to look at that real quick. Be sure and put that thing up on the mirror in your bathroom. Someplace you're going to be by every, every day. And every person in this church is going to be together thinking about this one thing. We're working ultimately toward revival. Part of the reason you can't have revival is because we got problems of our own and we don't want to deal with them. Why would God revive us when we don't want to deal with the problems we have? That's what revival is all about. <laughs> dealing with the issues. Now, everybody seems to think it's a terrible thing that God convicts us of our sins. It's a great thing. Amen. Conviction is good. Now, I know it don't feel good at the time, right? Oh, <laughs> Ain't nobody went with me on that. Oh, <laughs> Proverbs 28, 13. Okay, here's what we'll do. And since nobody went with me, we'll go again. We used to have a doctor who didn't talk real good English. He was, Zahur was his last name. He was from Pakistan. Really good doctor. He's up at K. I got a sinus infection. It's been several years ago now, and Charlotte got one just a day or two later, and so we went to the doctor's office, and in come the doctor, and he never understood me because I always talk like this, and he didn't. So he comes in, and I said, now, shots don't bother me at all. They mean nothing to me, but Charlotte's terrified of it. Comes in, and I said, Doc, I really think we both need a shot. And he kind of smiled, and he went, need a shot? And I said, yeah, need a shot. Charlotte's going, no, we don't need a shot. He looked around a little bit and he said, now this is what's wrong with you. And he looked at Charlotte and he said, he smiles real big and he says, she don't need shot, but you need two. <laughs> and I ended up with two shots. Charlotte didn't get in. Whatever was wrong with her was just a little bit different. Mine had progressed farther and he gave me two shots. And he, he seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> And Charlotte really enjoyed it. But in the process, folks, who all likes to get shot? I mean, they don't bother me, but that don't mean I like it. But they, there's a purpose for it. Okay? Whenever you go in... Here's the whole point. The point is, sometimes things that we don't like are actually in our best interest. Nobody really likes conviction. We don't like for God to point out to us that we're doing something wrong. Wouldn't it be much easier to ignore it? It'd be much easier not to do anything about it. Why don't God just look the other way this time? Why don't He just let this slide? Good grief, with all the problems in the world. Why does He have to pick on me about this little thing? But each one of us deal with this. Why? Not because God's like my doctor and just enjoys messing with you. It's because God knows what's best for you. That's where this verse comes in. And I'm, I'm actually going to jump through some different verses tonight. I don't usually try to do that too much, but I'm going to jump a lot. Let's spend just a few minutes, though. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Boy, what's your choice? You only have two choices. It doesn't give three, A, B, C, D. There's not a none of the above. If you confess your sins, if you turn them over to God, if you're willing to deal with them, God will give you mercy. He forgives you and helps you move on. But what happens when you try to cover them up? You just keep having them. How much do you sweep under the rug? We used to make our kids go clean their room. Any of you guys have to clean your room? How much stuff can you get under your bed, Rodney? A lot. A lot. <laughs> See, now there's a kid that, that knows about the truth in this deal. 
you can get a lot of stuff under a bed, according to my kids. I mean, they'd have this big pile, and we'd say, you can't do this until you clean that room. Go in there, and it's clean. Then you open the closet, and it all falls out. You go over and look underneath the bed, and it's just jammed up underneath there. Pull back the covers, and there's peanut butter sandwiches and cookies, and just all smeared in the bed. It's amazing. There's a lot of stuff you can cover up, isn't there? But it's still there. And with God, you can cover it up. You can hide from it. You can act like it ain't there. But God's always going to go, what about under the bed? What about that? What about that? And you can spend all day long saying, God, don't mess, don't mess with me. Man, there's a Middle East over there. Go to Mexico, God. Bother them people. They're cutting each other's heads off down there. All that drug trade going on and you dealing with me about my little piddly stuff and, God, and in God's mind, your little stuff is not piddly. It's just as important to Him as anything else on this planet. Whatever your problems are, He wants you to take them to Him because He wants to clean them up. And He knows who can clean them. It's only Him. That's the only place things get clean. It goes on and it says, Happy. I like that. Uh, or in, what is it? Randy, in the words of Phil. Happy, happy, happy. Happy is the man that fears always. But he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. If you want to hide stuff, it's going to give you one more thing to hide, and one more thing to hide, and one more thing to hide, and then after a while, it just leads you down a road you don't know how to get back. Have you ever told something? I know nobody in here has ever done this, so I'm certain that I'm just kind of talking to myself, but y'all bear with me while I talk to myself a minute. You tell something and it ain't quite true, but then you get caught on it later and you have to tell something different to adjust for what you told back then. And then when they... <laughs> well, we have one person in here that's done that. Now, what my dad always told me was it was much easier to tell the truth than to try to remember a lie. Now, when you're a kid especially, that don't make no sense. But when it comes to God, how can you lie to God? You can't. If somebody already knows the truth, why do you want to lie about it? If the truth is out, God knows all about you. Inside, out, up, down, backward, forward, He knows all about it. So why do you want to lie about it? Isn't it much simpler? And, and, and again, I'll go back this morning, the song that Randy sang. How many of you have ever stopped and just thought how good God had been to you? And I know me. I know me much better than any of you know me, and I know I don't deserve it. And every time God blesses me with something, in the back of my mind, there's always that thought that, well, I didn't deserve that. I wonder when I'm going to have to pay for this. I wonder when I'm going to have to pay for that deal. There's always that, boy, everything's good today. Wait till tomorrow. Kind of like the weather. If you don't like it today, just hang around. It'll change tomorrow. Isn't that the way we see things sometimes? That we know ourselves. We look at ourselves and then it shocks me how good God is to me. But he's good to me because. Not because of me, but because of his son. He looks at me and he sees Jesus Christ. That's not because I'm such a great similar to Jesus Christ or anything like that. It's because Jesus is in my heart. It's because when things go wrong, Jesus is the one dealing with me. How many of you have ever thought about that conversation? I try to bring it up all the time because I want you to look at it like this. Whenever you begin to to do something wrong, how often is it that God is looking at you and you just know that Jesus scratches his head and he turns around to the Father and he says, I'm working with him. That's an intercessor. And that's what he is. God sees all that we do and so does Jesus. But Jesus is trying to make us like Him. He is an intercessor. He's that one that's the go-between. Now, I want you to turn with me and we're going to move through here. I've got several different places to go. 
I'm going to skip that one because we're going to be way too long otherwise. I'm going to turn to, we're closer to Psalms, so let's turn to Psalms. Psalm chapter 32. We're real close there, so I'll do that one first. Why is it that I want to be forgiven? Why is it I want to tell God about my problems? Why is it that I want God to be there? Psalm chapter 32, verse 1. Blessed is he who transgressions are forgiven, whose sin is covered. It's a blessing. Now, how many of us here have transgressions? How many of us have sinned? All have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Blessed is the person who they're forgiven. That's why the conviction is there, because it's a blessing to be forgiven. Have you ever done something to someone and then had to go back and ask forgiveness? We talked about this in our discipleship training. It's not easy. It's not easy to say, I messed that one up. Sorry. And a lot of times it shocks someone when you say, I'm sorry. I usually don't know how to react when somebody says they're sorry because I think they got some ulterior motive. You eyeballing me? You know. What do you got on your mind? Because that's just not human nature, is it? Human nature, human nature, the flesh would tell us, cover it up, cover it up, cover it up, and then cover it up. Politicians do it all the time, don't they? They get caught doing something, just lie about it. Then when you get caught lying about it, cover that up. Then when you get caught covering it up, but you lied, then you got to lie about the cover up that you covered up the lie. And it goes on and on and on, and then one day they get in court and they say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like they got amnesia. That's human nature. But once you're saved, you should have a different nature. That nature should be, man, I messed that one up. Forgive me. Help me to move on. Because that's what God's about. God's about forgiveness and moving on. He's not about hanging on and holding grudges. It's going to go on and say, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and whose spirit there is no guile. Don't try to, don't try to trick God. What's this impute? I love that word. That's a big old, that's one of them $5 words. Impute. That means he gives it to you. He puts it on you even though you don't deserve it. You know, my brothers used to give me the Dutch rub. They used to impute me with Dutch rubs, even though I didn't deserve them. See, forgiveness is a whole different thing. God puts it on us even though we don't deserve it, but it covers. Blessed is the one who's covered, who's willing to say, I did this wrong. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring of all day long. Well, that sounds complicated, but bear with me. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into drought of summer. I, let me stop right there. That's a whole lot of Shakespeare. When really all it's saying is, if you try to cover stuff up, it just wears you out. Have you ever tried to just hang on to something and I'm not going to share it, I'm going to hang on to it, I'm going to hang on to it, and after a while it just makes you feel sick. It's just, it's not normal. For somebody who talks to God and walks with God, it literally tears their heart out to have to try to hide something. First of all, they can't. And second of all, it's not supposed to be how we are. Don't try to hide things from Him. Whatever's there, He already knows it. Talk to Him about it. Let Him give you an answer. Let Him help you do better next time. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. He forgives. But it's when we do our part. Now, 1 John chapter 1. That's where I'll finish up. I want you to see this in 1 John chapter 1. And then we'll close up. I know it's right here. My Bible lost it. Those pages are gone. 
Sometimes my Bible says stuff, Rodney, that I don't like. <laughs> but it's amazing, it's amazing how those pages are still there. 1 John chapter 1, I'm going to start reading in verse 3. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and His Son. Our fellowship is with God, with Jesus. Now let me ask you this. What is it that us hiding things from God, when we try to do things our own way and they don't work and we hide that, when we sin and we don't talk to Him about it, where is the pain in that? Fellowship. We have trouble with our fellowship with God. And that's ultimately what the Bible is all about. In the garden. Boy, I'll go back to everybody who's been here for the Revelation Bible study. But in the garden, man messed up. God put us out of the garden. And ultimately, what he's trying to do is put us back in a spot that's perfect. He's trying to rebuild everything that we messed up. That's what he has spent all of eternity doing, trying to fix our messes. And he does it partly with our fellowship. So he expects us to be honest with it. I, I use it all the time. There's no sense in going away from it because it's the only thing I know that makes sense. If you and your spouse don't talk, get you an attorney and put it on the retainer because you're going to need one. People have to talk. You can't not talk. You have to learn about people. Now sometimes when you talk, you'd be better off not to. Amen? Oh, come on. Sometimes I say stuff, and then later I think this has been one of them times where I should have kept my mouth shut. But then there's also that time in, when, in God's eyes. Whenever God says, what was that about? And I'm thinking, I don't want to talk. And then you try to make excuses to God. Try to blame. Oh man, that's somebody else's fault. You're never going to convince God that your sin is somebody else's fault. Never. Ain't going to happen. He knows exactly whose fault it is. Your sin is your fault. Responsibility is a good thing. But it's part of conviction. Take responsibility for your actions. That brings about fellowship. That makes God closer to you. Now, let's keep reading. Not only God, but, but Jesus Christ. And these things write I unto you, that your joy may be full. If you don't have fellowship with God, you're going to have no joy in your life. There's a lot of things, that, and I, I tell people, I, I'm, it may just be because I'm goofy. I enjoy life. I try to find joy in all that I do. Now, there's some things that are more difficult than others, huh? Isn't that right? There are some things that you can't see the joy in it, but you still know that God put it in front of you. And you've got to keep moving forward. So John says, I'm not writing these things to get on to you. I'm not writing these things that, so that you'll be unhappy and sad. I'm writing these things so that you'll have joy in your life. How are we going to have joy? By fellowship with God. Verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. When we have fellowship with God, we walk in the light. If we say then that we have fellowship with him and walk in the darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Conviction. Has anybody ever thought that all these rules that we have in the Bible, that the conviction is because God's mad at us? 
It's not that way at all. How many of us have been in churches and we've been around people who want us to think God's mad at us at all times? God's just waiting for you to mess up. And boy, when you do, boom! He's going to come down on you like a ton of brick. Just mess with him a second. You got all these people throw all these rules out there. Why is it that God wants us to have fellowship with Him? Why is it that He says if you, if you don't, you end up in sin and you get worse and worse and you're not even happy, there's no joy in your life? Because He knows what's best for us. Anybody here with children, if you've ever had to discipline your children... How many people want to? No. You want your kids to be perfect, don't you? Now, for anybody here, just let me throw this out there across the board. And I ain't going to offend I ain't gonna offend nobody, but I'm going to tell you the truth. There ain't no perfect kids, including yours. See, I, I, have, no, I have no misunderstandings. My kids were not perfect. Now, I was always told the preacher's kids had so much trouble because they played with the deacon's kids, but that's all I ever knew. What really and honestly God's doing is He's trying to put you in a spot where you don't fail. He's trying to put you in a spot so you can be the best. Isn't that what we want for our kids? For our grandkids? We always want to put them in a spot where they'll do their best. Now, Sometimes they do stuff that's not all that bright and we have to discipline them. That's what it's about. I don't know in all honesty that I was ever angry with any of my four kids. And I can tell you truthfully, I've never been angry with my grandkids. They're, they're just about as close to perfect as it gets. It's amazing. Now my kids, I can trust them as far as I can throw them. But now my grandkids, that's a little better. So, now here's my story. I've got to end you with a story, I know. A couple churches after this, we were up, all up toward Kansas City and we're going to Bible school one night and the, one of the ladies in church called and she said, have you left for church yet? And I said, no. And she said, stop at the store. We forgot to pick up the bread for Bible school. Well, they ran about 150 in Bible school. So I went in and me and Stan are in there and Stan's, I guess, probably four at the time. He's got his little booster seat. He's in the pickup. We got this pickup full of bread. I mean, it's just all between us, all underneath him, all around. I mean, we're just stacked in this bread driving down to the church. And I said, now, Stan, we're going to have five rules. Now, Stan's big on rules. I, I, it's just what they taught him in school. Got to have rules, and then you follow them. And he's real good. So here's our five rules. Number one, don't step on the bread. Number two, don't step on the bread. Number three, don't step on the bread. Number four, don't forget rule one through three. And number five, don't accidentally step on the bread. Because I know how he is. He gets all excited, and we're going to Bible school. He's all, whoo, boy, he's in his little seat. We got there, I come to a stop, he throws this thing open, and bam, and he's standing right in the middle of this bread. It's about knee deep. He looks around and he started screaming, I forgot. I said, what? He said, but it was an accident. And I said, Stan, you just broke all five rules. One through three was don't step on the bread. Four was don't forget. And five was don't accidentally do it. He said, I broke all five of them. And I said, yes, you did. And he got down out of the pickup and he dropped his head and he walked inside real slow and I'm trying to load the bread out and get it out there. And he's sitting inside bawling like a little baby. I mean, big old alligator tears and here's about a dozen of these little old ladies. And they're all going, Bro Jim, what'd you say to him? I, what'd I do? And these old ladies, they're like, what are you doing? This boy didn't do nothing. I said, he broke five rules in about five seconds. And he started crying he said, but I did it on accident because I forgot. I said, that was two of the rules. See, now, God didn't give us these rules to make fun of us. I knew he was going to do it. I'll just tell you. There was no way that that little hyper outfit was not going to stomp that bread. But I'm trying to teach him something. 
God knows we're going to mess up. Think about that. Do you think God looks down at you and thinks, that child's perfect? No, God looks down at you and thinks, I'm going to make them perfect. It's imputed upon us. That's what imputed means. It means it ain't ours. Perfection is not in me. Perfection's in Him. So I'm supposed to walk with Him. When I have a problem, I'm supposed to tell Him. Where's my forgiveness come from? Him. It's imputed to me. It's a real simple thing, and He knows you're going to make mistakes. He knows you're going to sin. And when you do, where do you go with it? Do you put it in your pocket, ball it up, hide it, throw it behind something? Hope it didn't happen. Hope nobody saw that. I've been running through the gym playing basketball. Be dribbling along and all at once my foot slip in warm-ups. Just slide and let the ball go or throw it. Well, I hope nobody saw. And you raise up and there's about 500 people in the stands pointing. You did it. He saw it. Folks, it's that simple. If you did it, if you thought it, if it was even in your heart, he already knows all about it. Why would you hide it? Why would you live with it? Why would you cover it up? It's not because of your relationship with him. Because that makes no sense. Maybe you don't want anybody else to find out. Maybe you think it's a big secret. But guess what? Look around. There's no big secret. Everyone has sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why? To impute salvation on us. To impute forgiveness. To put it on us. Even though we didn't deserve it. Ponder on that this week as you go. I'm going to ask your musicians to come forward. As we stand, I'll just ask if there's any here tonight that don't know Him as their personal Savior, anybody here who hasn't asked Him into your heart, let this be the time that you let Him impute His forgiveness on you. Just give it to you. Put it on you. You're not going to earn it. You're not going to do anything good enough to get it. But He's got to put it in your life. He's got to forgive you. But you have to ask to walk in the light. And for those of us here, maybe there's some of us have got something in our lives that we've tried to keep totally behind the point. We're going to fix it one day. It's all ours. We're going to hang on to it. It don't matter if I know it or not. I'm not the one going to forgive you for it. It doesn't matter if everybody else in here knows what it is or not. It's not up to any of us. To impute salvation, righteousness, forgiveness. But you have to go to God. You have to talk to God about what's in your life. Clear it out. And the Bible says, happy. Happy's the one that does that. Huh. Which do you choose? Lord, we just ask you right now to be with this time. We ask, Lord, that if there's any here that don't know you as their Savior, that they allow you right now just to, to let your light shine in their life. We know that you are the light of the world. Lord, for any here that's, that's dealing with things that they're just trying to, to keep messing with and to cover up, Lord, just let them right now realize they're not going to cover anything from you. You know what's in the very heart, in the mind, even in the plans that we don't even have yet. So, Lord, just allow each one of us to turn our lives over to you and, and to walk in your light and realize that we're not perfect, but we have to rely on you and the fellowship with you for our salvation. You're what it's all about, not us. Lord, just help us to realize that and walk closer to you. Let's all stand.
here. She's going to be with us longer than probably what she wants to be, but that's the way it's going to be for a while. So, uh, do I have a motion in the church? Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, and who could be against somebody joining the family of God? So, all in favor, amen? Amen. amen. Okay. Carrie, this is with a word of prayer. 